Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to be here. <clears throat> so, I am just really full from Thanksgiving still. Which is not a joke, it's more of a disclaimer. My son, he likes these weird leftover combinations, like, like turkey and gravy between two pieces of pecan pie. It tastes bad. Does anyone know if it's gonna rain tomorrow? Don't say tittens, don't say tittens. Wow, that was a really bad start. I think I'm gonna start again. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Ignore the woman who was here a minute ago. She's gone. <laughs> like your alibi tonight, sir. Your friend fell asleep at a strip club. I'd hate to see what it takes to keep him away. <laughs> hey, you know what I discovered today? You can take your kids to the airport, put them on a plane, and just fly them somewhere else. <laughs> Technology is amazing. It used to be for that kind of peace and quiet, you had to leave your kids on the steps of a church. <laughs> and the dangerous thing is not that you're sending your kids off with complete strangers on a vehicle that has something called a cockpit. No. <laughs> The really dangerous thing is that once they're gone, you have a chance to remember what life was like without them. <laughs> right? It all comes flooding back. The clean floor. The calm apartment. Your goddamn waistline. Sex. Sex where you make it all the way to the end. Or at least your husband does. In any room, on any appliance. Well, almost any appliance. I'd steer clear of the cake mixer. <laughs> no more turning the volume on the news up so when your kid asks what those loud sounds were, you can say Khrushchev was banging his shoe again. <laughs> I'm going to admit to you that as scary as the threat of a Soviet takeover is, a small part of me is thinking, well, that'll cover blowjob Fridays for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my time is up. I'm wanted in hell. Please return your friend to the upright position. You have been a kind and forgiving audience. Don't forget to tip your waitress. She's saving up to send her kids to Pittsburgh. I'm Mrs. Maisel. Thank you and good night. The game with the arm. Get me. I'm working. Mm -hmm. Quick, hurry, go. Did you just tip me? I'm uh, Susie Meyerson, Susie Meyerson and Associates. Okay, well, hello, Susie Meyerson. How'd you like the show? Uh, I didn't see much of it. Well, you saw my comic. I saw you watching my comic. You were watching me watch the show. I didn't even take my top off. What do you think, honestly? Your girl's funny. She is. And kind of a looker, huh? Good package for TV, don't you think? <laughs> well. Why don't you put her on your show? I think she'd be a big hit. She's not right for my show. Why not? Too funny? Too downtown. I'm playing to the cornfield, but she is good. She can do cornfields. Sorry, but good luck. Okay. Put her on your staff. What? Your writing staff. I know you don't have any female writers. You sell soap. You know who buys soap? Laundromats. She can help you with those jokes. How do you know I don't have any women on my writing staff? Just a hunch. Well, my wife has been saying that the show could use a woman's perspective. Sounds like your wife is a smart lady. You're smarter than I am. Susie. Ah, here she is. Miriam Maisel, I'd like you to be Gordon Ford. Gordon Ford, Miriam Maisel. Nice to meet you, you're a very funny lady. Thank you, I'm a big fan of your show, and you, by extension. You wanna come write for me? I'm sorry? Now, Susie Meyerson and Associates here has been talking you up, says you could be my woman, writer's room once. Oh, no, I, I'm not a writer. Sidebar. What? what? Sidebar, sorry, I'm sorry. What's with the sidebar? Do you trust me? Yes. Take this job. I don't wanna be a writer. Of course not. No one wants to be a writer, but this job gets you in the building. And once you are in the building, you will get in his space and you will make him laugh every time you see him. And finally, he will see you for what you are, a goddamn star. This is it. This is the break. You win, 